the opportunity to pass his boss. Good evening. It's six oh five. About now. Good evening. It's six oh five. I'm going to call the uh, general town meeting to order. Um, tonight's agenda is a simple one. It is just a meet and greet. It's just an opportunity for people to mingle and get to know each other. There are some new faces that have been either elected or appointed. There's some new staff people. Um, so there really is no official business tonight other than to to interact and you know have a conversation here or there. Um, there are refreshments in the back. Um, some people you'll see are wearing masks. Masks are not required. Um, they are not prohibited either. So if you're comfortable, please do. If not, that's up to you. Um, with that, I'm going to uh, mute the conversation and stop the recording. Um, we will adjourn the general meeting at 7 o'clock for the Board of Selectmen meeting. Then we will recess that at 7.30 for the annual town meeting. Then after the annual town meeting, we'll reconvene the Board of Selectmen meeting until our business is concluded. Um, so with that, could I have a motion to uh, recess the general town meeting until 7 o'clock? Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are in recess. It's 7.02. I'm going to call the meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Um, we, our first item of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Deputy First Selectwoman, would you like to lead us? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. The United States of America is a republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, three selectmen are here present. Selectman Musta is with us remotely. Sarah, is that better for you to hear now? Nope. Speech is very poor. Uh, Matt, are the lights lighting up in the back? Test, test, yeah, there. Okay, let's try this one. Yes. Okay. I'm going to move this. Test, test. Sarah, how about that? Is that better? It's a little bit better. Not really sure what the distinction is there from usual, but if that's a little bit better. All staticky. We'll... Sorry. Well, Alan shuffling through his bag. That might be the staticky here. <laughs> <laughs> the bag man. Um, okay, so we'll do the best we can, okay? Um, so Sarah is here virtually. Uh, Selectman Nordell is home ill and is unable to attend. Um, so our next item of business is the approval of the meeting minutes from December 2nd, 2021. Make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from December 2nd, 2021. Motion has been made to accept the minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion or corrections? Sarah, give me a thumbs up if you're good. Good. She she could call in. Sarah, do you want to try dialing in on the phone number? <clears throat> Here, I'm going to type it in the chat. Bear with us just one second, folks.
I've never actually dialed in on these before. Okay, I'm here. Can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you. Is that better? Yes, a lot better. Thank you. Okay. Um, so a motion has been made and seconded to accept the minutes as presented. Um, are, are there any corrections? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So adopted. Our next item of business is public participation. This is one of two opportunities for the public to address the members of the board. Uh, I'm going to start by offering the opportunity to anybody who's here present in the room, and then I'll turn to anybody who's with us virtually. Is there anyone who's here in person who would like to address the board of selectmen? Okay. Is there anybody who's with us electronically online who would like to address the board of selectmen? Okay, there will be another opportunity later in the meeting. It'll be much later in the meeting um, for the, the public to address the board on items of concern. Now we're on to communication. There are two. Um, one, at the last meeting, you all asked me to um, send a letter off to DOT um, referencing the recently completed Route 5 study um, in, as part of our acceptance of the pedestrian control feature upgrades. So I just wanted to provide you with what I sent off to DOT in referencing that plan. Um, and the second one, second item is a letter from Congressman Larson um, reiterating the award procedure for the American Rescue Plan Act for the town, both in terms of local county and school district appropriations and when we can expect those. Um, we, have, we got the first tranche in June and we'll get the second tranche in uh, June of 22. So we used, as you all know, we used 1.1 million for our, our small business program. Um, and then we'll have to make a determination in the next couple of years as to what to spend the other Two and a half million on it. Any questions or comments on that? Um, we're in commission resignations, new appointments. Um, so we have Karen Christensen has offered to continue service on her on the pension board. She recently was a, a representative serving as a, a member of the board of finance, termed off the board of finance, and now is willing to serve as a member of, of the general public. Um, Al, make a motion to reappoint, or actually, it's an appointment, right? It's an appointment. Yeah, appoint uh, Karen Christensen to the uh, pension board. I'll second that for a point of discussion. Made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Uh, yes. Um, I don't have a problem with the candidate at all. Um, I have a question with the uh, policy. Um, is she representing the board of finance on that board? No, she just. Taking up. No, the excuse me. Um, the ordinance allows for one representative from the, the board of selectmen, two representatives from the board of finance, yeah. a representative each from the board of ed and the police commission, uh, and then two representatives at large. So it should, should be at large. Yeah. Okay, Did I miss one, Amy? Is that seven? Did I count seven? Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, so she's going to be one of the two at large okay. seats. The at large seats are, and the, the representative from the board of selectmen are appointed by this board. Each other body sends their own. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, Mrs. Maltesi. Uh, 
How are you today? <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? Uh, is Ruth still here? Um, do we have uh, an update that we are prepared to share on South Road or not at this time? I could share that a subdivision application has been accepted by the county commission. That's one of the steps in that Gantt chart to get us to conveyance, but we are still waiting on the sewer <laughs> upgrade. We are like, way back to the final plan So the soft target of hitting the end of the year is probably not going to happen, but there are a number of things that are slowing that down a little bit. Nonetheless, when it gets finished, and it will be finished as soon as we can, it will be done correctly so that the residents are protected. Um, <clears throat> any questions or comments on that? No, no, I, I don't have to report on that in my in my selections report. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to step on your punchline there. Um, I'd like to, to uh, postpone agenda item 8C. Um, it is not yet ready for discussion. I, I thought that it may be, but it is not. I have a motion to postpone that until the next regular meeting. Make a motion to postpone item 8C. Robert Fire Member and another second. Rob Brook, Fire Department, and Leah. I'll second it for discussion. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Yeah, are we going to put a um, constructive time and date with this fund? Because I'm concerned about running into some legal ramifications on the road. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a it is a negotiation, so it's difficult to. And the, the ordinance does provide for a remedy if the two parties can't come to terms. I don't think we're there. Um, I think that we are substantially to an agreement. We just needed to, to run through some of the labor law to make sure that we were protected. So we are making some of We are, I would say that's fair to say. Would you say that? Yeah. Yes, that is exactly it. Other discussion? Sarah? Nope, nothing to add. Okay. Um, then a motion's been made and seconded. All in favor of postponement, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. I'd like to table agenda item 9A, which is the presentation from the Westfield State University Graduate Research Project. Um, can I have a motion to do that? Make a motion to table item 9A, Westfield Grad Project presentation. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We'll come back to that later this evening. Ms. Maltesi. How are you? So, so you come with good news. I do come with good news. Um, on behalf of the senior center and staff, um, we received notice this week that we received a the 5310 grant for a new senior bus. And, and even better news is normally it is an 80 20 split, um, but this year it is 100% funded um, by the DOT. So we did not have to pay anything for the bus this year and should be having it arrive in the spring. That is good. Thank, thank Teresa Hill, uh, our transportation coordinator, for her hard work on that grant and getting everything in on time and making sure we were part of the um, competition this year uh, because we did not receive the grant last year. So kudos to her. Thank you. Awesome. So there is some pro forma stuff that needs to happen in order for us to move forward that any authorization from the board to enter into an MOU between the Greater New Haven Transit District and the Town of East Windsor and to fill out any associated paperwork um, that goes with that. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll finish that up. Thank you very much. Now you, now you can go. Um, I would like to add two agenda items. Um, one is a, a conversation concerning a contract with a company called ClearGov. And the second would be um, a discussion of the Broadway Fire Department's request for purchase for a new fire truck. Could I add those as agenda items 9, D, and E, respectively? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. 
just wanted to do it out of all this time. <laughs> um, I want to take up the clear gov thing, and this will involve the direct, the finance director. Um, so one of the things that I've been working hard on uh, since taking office is making sure the government is as, as transparent as it can be. Um, and there are ways that, that Amy and I uh, think we can do the budget process a bit more clear. So I wanted to, Amy, you can come up or use the podium or stay right there, whatever you want to do. Just um, I wanted to share my screen and show a couple of examples of what we're talking about. So everybody's familiar with what we use. This is what um, other towns in the area that's like. This is an example of what other towns in the area are doing. Um, so this is, let me get that out of the way. So what you see here is a, a budget message that comes from the first selectman explaining what the, the process is and the timelines are and all that. And that's pretty pro forma. We do that too. I'm required by charter to submit that to the town clerk every year. Um, but then they, they talk about other things that um, the software allows for. So you, you can give an overview of, let's slowly catch up. You can give an overview of um, where the budget is and what it looks like. This is all stuff that is a bit more um, plain, plainly written as to what our budget entails. This is not going to be something super new. Um, but then you can talk about other aspects of this that I think are a bit more compelling. So this shows uh, comparatives between where the budget was expected to be, where it actually is, where the revenue is coming from. Um, the historical revenue. Basically, this is this is a more um, well put together version of the charts that I have included in my budget presentations over the last couple of years. Um, they are, when I do them, they are very labor intensive. They're also, there is the opportunity for me to have a couple of fat finger moments and get some of the data wrong. This, this program ports over with Munis. So anything that's in Munis shows up here and we can, we, it can be easily explained to voters where the money is and where it's been. So this is one of the tools that they have that's available. You can then break it down further by uh, looking at individual town departments. You can show what the change in, in this case, this is their, their general administration. So you can see there's a decrease there. Um, what the trend is over a 10 year period. Expenditure types within the, the department. So it's a different way of showing the voters where their money is going. So that's, that's one of the, the tools that um, this thing does. It also allows for, the, you can run, a full complete budget report. And ours, ours is typically what, 18 pages, something like that. Um, you can run them so that they are, is the email coming in? Didn't come in. The town of South Windsor has one that's almost 300 pages. And it explains in, in very graphic detail, very granular detail where and how the, the, the monies are being spent. The other feature that this program offers is transparency. Um, and this is something that I really, really like. So this tells you of your total budget, you can actually ask how much of the money is going where. So you can plug it in to say, I pay, you know, my property tax bill is $5,000 a year. How much of that $5,000 goes to education? How much of it goes to debt service? How much of it goes to, to recreational services? How much of it goes to policing, how much of it goes to anything, so that people know where their tax, tax dollars are being spent and how it's being spent over time. Where the revenue is coming from. It's, it's a more user-friendly way of presenting budget information to people without them having to interpret or misinterpret uh, budget data. 
What other points should we cover? <laughs> you, you woman, a few words. What? I think that's good. So we have an opportunity to get this. Uh, the total data package is um, for this year would be fifty five hundred dollars. Fifty six. Fifty six hundred dollars, and then next year would be eleven thousand two hundred. Plus eighteen hundred dollars set up. It's because we're mid year comments. Not it's not stick or shock. It would start for January first, and they would give us a upgraded uh, rate. Um, so what this does for not very much money is it's an opportunity to show people where their money is going and what we're doing with it and how we're progressing and what we're working towards. Um, as we look on, Ruth and I have spent some time looking on other websites in terms of economic development outreach that they've been doing. Um, and one of the things that shows up pretty clearly is that towns that are doing well are putting a lot of data forward. Um, and we don't. And it's not that's not a fault per se. It's just that it's not something that we have historically done. So you, by taking advantage of some of these opportunities that are out there, there's an opportunity for us to a packaged professional look to the to the general public, to our constituency, and also those people who might um, become part of our constituency, which is what the goal is. So um, I think this is a home run. I think this is something that that would make the budget process much more easily understood. Um, but it's a contract, and I can't just enter into the contract without the acquiescence of the board. Um, so what is your opinion of this? You know, wh where can we get to? And we have seven, I'm just keeping track of the time, seven minutes before we have to pause. What do you think of this? Well, uh, I guess that my initial question is, do they actually think they could onboard this in time for this year? Four to five weeks. Yeah, um, they said it would be exporting units, which takes seconds. Yeah, they said it's, it's always easy. I'm an IT guy, don't forget. <laughs> they, they said it's two, three weeks, but we figured with the, with the holiday interruption, it, if we act tonight, we can have this in place for the budget process this year. If we don't have tonight, we'll do it. We'll do things the way we've conventionally done, and you know, that'll be that. We'll revisit it again next year. Um, but it's an opportunity for us to say, this is where your money is. This is what you're doing. Do they also? have the, the capability of, you know, changing things for their own, you know, if somebody wanted to go in and say, you know, I think the budget should be like this, and no. they don't have that ability. No, they can look at um, individual uh, pieces of it, but every, all of the data is still there. It, it's, Amy and I had that same concern about the potential for um, manipulation, and it is more difficult to do, after I spent some more time playing with it, it's more difficult to do than you would think. Um, so as an example, uh, so look, if you look at the screen here, $5,000. So if I lived in, in South Windsor and I paid $5,000, first of all, it's a pretty small house. Um, but <laughs> you can see of the $5,000, um, 3,000 of that's going to the school. 414 is going to debt service. 399 is going to public safety. 353 is going to public works. It goes on like that. Yeah, really um, like that. But you know, I've seen other software packages that, that other towns have where you can go in and kind of say, well, if you know, what would happen if we cut this or we added that? And you know, just so you, you know, for yourself would know, like we kind of do when we're doing our deliberations. They don't have that capability. With this. Not that they demoed to us. Do you remember them showing the build your own thing? I know the comptroller's office has that, but um, particularly around the state taxes, but um, yeah. I didn't see that in this. I'm just curious. Um, so what you can see here is now, now what we're looking at is only how the pie breaks down between dollars spent on public safety, public works, general government, and human services. So somebody could say, oh, look, public works is getting, you know, whatever that would be, 40% of the pie. Well, it is, but it isn't. It's only 7.1% of the budget. It, uh, public safety is 8% of the budget. And all those numbers are, are grayed out here so that you can see somebody manipulated that data. Um, so I think, to me, that answers the concern that, that we had initially had. I think for 5,500 bucks, it's worth it. If we don't like it, we can always stop using it. But um, the towns that are using it, it's like it's Woodbridge, it's South Windsor, it's Tallinn. Um, it is, there's a three that comes by right off the bat, but there are more. This looks like a three year contract. Yeah. And if we didn't like it after the first year, can we get out of it? I would assume so. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, it does because it could um, not appropriate. So. That has to be something that we include in the budget. If the ultimate board finds decides that they don't like it and they want to cut it or they voted cut, then it was an attempt at being a bit more transparent. Um, no, I think it's worth a shot. I think that our biggest uh, problem is getting information out there. So this is pretty much everything you could possibly want. Right. It also generates um, a digital budget book um, that is, um, it basically takes the best aspects of the annual report and what we would put in a budget mailer and a budget presentation and, and puts it all together. And you can pick and choose the aspects of it that you want. So if you're not particularly interested in the capital program, as an example, you can run the, the digital budget book without having capital in, included in that. So it becomes kind of a, a build to interest program. Pretty thoughts? I can't see you anymore. Sarah? I had a question similar to Alan about the timeline, which was covered, um, but I do agree that the more information we can get out to the public, the better. Um, so I would be in favor of this. Any concerns, questions, comments? The only question I have, I, I like that it's a good program because I had an opportunity to um, spend a little bit of time with you the other day going over it, and then the attachment that you sent. Um, I think it will help us during the budget process that people will get the right information on the system rather than trying to second guess what things are. I think that would be better for that, that process. But um, my concern is with the Board of Ed. Mm -hmm. The Board of Ed is separate entity, but they go to our unit system. Mm -hmm. um, would their stuff? The board the event, total. Yeah, the board, we would get the total just like we do when we put together the, the budget that goes out to the public. The individual line items within their uniform charter of accounts and all that is the separate software package that we're not contemplating here. I, I haven't had a chance to talk to Dr. Kinkin about it. He's going through some changes in his budgeting process that I don't think this would be the right year for him to take that on anyway. Uh, um, and I agree with that, but moving forward. He could, yeah. There's another application that's specific to boards of education. Do we want to keep discussing? Because uh, we have one minute until I need to pause this. So do we want to um, make a motion or keep discussing? I can make a motion if you want. I'll make a motion to allow um, the first workman to enter into a uh, contract with Clear Go uh, for a new software package uh, for web campus. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Um, can I have a motion to recess the board of selectmen meeting? Make a motion to go into recess. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> we are in recess at 7 30. Um, I'd now like to call to order the town meeting. First item of business is the election of a moderator. Are there nominations? Second town meeting nominate Lisa Beverly to be moderator. Are there other nominations? Is there a motion to close nominations? Second town meeting motion to close nominations. There a second. Okay. Motion has been made by Rebecca, seconded by Tom. Um, all in favor of closing nominations, please say aye. Aye. Uh, all aye. in favor of Jason Bowser as town moderator, please say aye. 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 Thank you, folks. Um, now I'm going to ask the town clerk to read the town meeting public notice. Madam clerk. Okay. Town of East Windsor annual public town meeting notice. The legal voters of the town of East Windsor are hereby warned that a town meeting will be held in the John Daly Jr. meeting room, Town Hall, 11 Rise Street, Broadbrook, on December 16, 2021, at 7.30 p.m. for the following. One, to consider and act upon a resolution that the reports of the first selectman, town finance director, treasurer, and other town officers be accepted 
as printed errors and omissions accepted. Two, to consider and vote on the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 7-9B that the hours for referenda held by the Town of East Windsor in the calendar year 2022 be held from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Three, to consider and act upon a resolution authorizing and empowering the first selectman and town finance director treasurer to borrow from time to time on behalf of in the name of the town for the purpose of meeting current expenses until the tax monies are available and to issue notes for same and to determine the amount of such notes and to execute, sell, and deliver the same. Four, to consider and act upon a resolution authorizing the selectmen as provided in Chapter 240, Part 11A of the General Statute of the State of Connecticut Revision of 1959 and as amended to enter into any and all agreements with the Commissioner of the Connecticut Department of Transportation relative to the expenditure of any unexpended balance of highway funds allotment due to the town on July 1st, 2022 and to enter into an agreement with said commissioner concerning the expenditure of said allotment. Dated at East Windsor, Connecticut, this eighth day of December, 2021. East Windsor Board of Selectmen, Jason E. Bowser. First Selectman, Sarah Muska, Selectman, Charlie Nordell, Selectman, Marie DeSouza, Deputy Selectman, and Alan Baker, Selectman. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Now I'm going to read the statement of the eligibility to vote. This is from Connecticut General Statute 7-6. At any town meeting other than a regular or special town election or at any meeting of any fire, sewer, or school district or any other municipal subdivision of any town incorporated by any special act, any person who is an elector of such town may vote and any citizen of the United States over the age of 18 years, jointly or severally, is liable to the town, district, or subdivision for taxes assessed against him on an assessment of not less than $1,000 on the last completed grant list of such town district or subdivision, or who would be so liable if not entitled to an exemption under general statutes subdivision 17, 19, 22, 23, 25, or 26 of section 12-81 may vote unless restricted by any provisions of any special act relating to such town district or subdivision. So if you're a registered voter or if you're a property owner in the town of East Windsor, you're eligible to vote. Um, I'm now going to ask whoever has resolution number one to please read the resolution, move it, and I'll ask for a second. Consider and act upon a resolution that reports of the first selectman, town finance director, treasurer, and other town officers be accepted as printed, errors and omissions accepted. Move the forego foregoing resolution be adopted. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion has been made by Alan Baker, seconded by Pete Carey Trump. Uh, any discussion on the resolution? Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Resolution is adopted. Who has resolution number two? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so to consider and vote on the uh, to consider and vote on the recommendation of the Board of Selectors pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 79B that the hours for the referendum held by the Town of East Windsor in the calendar year 2022 be held from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. and move the foregoing resolution to be adopted. Is there a second? Second. Motion seconded by Alan Baker. Uh, any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. So carried. Resolution number three. The second town meeting city of Fort Wright Street to consider and adopt act upon resolution authorizing the powers of the first selectman and the town finance director slash treasurer to borrow from time to time on behalf of and in the name of the town for the purpose of meeting current expenses until tax monies are available and to issue notes for same and to determine the amounts of such notes to and to execute, sell, and deliver the same. I, I uh, move the first going resolution be adopted. Second. Motion made by uh, Rebecca, seconded by Nicole. Any discussion on the resolution? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Resolution number four. Resolution number four to consider and act on resolution authorizing selectment as provided in Chapter 240, Part 1 2 A, General Statute of the State of Connecticut, Revision of 1959. And as of amendment, 
to enter into any and all agreements with the Commissioner of the Connecticut Department of Transportation relative to the expenditure of any unexpended balance highway funds allotted due to the town of July 1, 2022, and to enter into an agreement with said Commissioner concerning the expenditure of said allotment to foregoing resolution to be adopted. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Rebecca Talamini. Tom Buckley. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Uh, I'm sorry, did somebody have something? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. So carried. Uh, with no other business to come before the town meeting, I ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. It's not debatable. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. We're going to reconvene the um, meeting of the board of selectmen in a, in a moment. Um, I want to give the students uh, an opportunity to set up. Um, so we'll, we'll call that back over in a second. Nikki Dublin. Nikki Dublin. Uh, Michael Frankowitz and Thomas Howard. Um, Jason Bowser, I wanted to formally and publicly thank for all his efforts. He says that we met most Monday nights, but it went way beyond that. There was a lot of emails and there was a lot of things that he did in his own time. Um, so I want to thank him for that. I know the group is very uh, uh, grateful for that. There's two members that aren't here. One uh, is not here for circumstances beyond her control, Lindsay Corbett, and then there's um, Chuck Costello. He, I believe was going to try to uh, log in, but he may not be here, but he was uh, instrumental in making the presentation for us. So he's, uh, his name is up there. And then uh, you guys were introduced to uh, Seth, he was our professor and leader on that. So um, as we go through the process, you can see that our names are up there. So that um, that's what my, was our first screen. Nikki, if we can click through. You want to point at this, I think. You gotta come closer. I mean, I'm scared. Or I might be driving. What happens? Okay. All right, perfect. Technical <laughs> difficulties we get behind. Yeah. That's not a problem, right? <laughs> so, introduction. Um, what is the purpose? Uh, we wanted to take a look at the various departments that work with permitting and see if there was some better way through interdepartmental communications, through technology that we use um, and other things that are involved in the permitting process and see if there was some uh, enhancements or recommendations that we could make. So that's sort of like why we started this. We work with the departments, the public works, building department, uh, planning and development and the North Central Health District. There are other departments that are involved in the permitting process. There's zoning and it has an impact, um, uh, some impact on sewer. We, the WPCA is also involved in that. I'll talk a little bit more as we get through this. But we didn't, uh, we didn't interview anybody or involve them in this process. We stayed with this residential uh, basic commercial permitting. Uh, next slide. Uh, research questions. Uh, how efficient is the permitting process when we look at the economic development and the uh, customer service? Why is this examination important? Our project, we wanted to look at and see any town, I should be talking about this here, so it's simple. any town's um, development, economic development is important to stay competitive with towns around them and responsible economic development. Part of that process is following the laws and the permitting is a huge part of that. And everybody in here should be, or should have been, had permits in their life. Um, so the permit process can become complicated if you're from your building, just a shed in your backyard to a developer that wants to come through and build much larger uh, development. So uh, we wanted to look at how that process goes through East Windsor, the different boards that it would go through, um, how it would work, uh, efficiently with technology that they're currently existing. So basically the question became, what are we doing really well in East Windsor and what can we be doing better? And you'll see some, some surveys that we go forward, but uh, Jay, if you click it to the next screen. So to do this, 
we started off with a, a robust project and we, we narrowed it down through some research and time constraints to two groups, applicant groups and employee groups. Um, next screen, Greg. So the applicant group, it consisted of a random sample of recent um, permit applicants, applications that happened in the town of East Windsor. We went back about a year. We worked with Joe Sauerhofer, who is the uh, deputy director of <clears throat> public works. He uh, worked with the vendor that they currently use permit uh, link and was able to pull off some of the permits, most of the permits for the last calendar year. We then developed survey questions in our group and we sent those survey questions out to the applicants with various questions that we're going to get into. Thomas is going to get into uh, in the next couple of slides. So we, we got the feedback from them through questionnaires and survey. Uh, next slide. The, the next group was the employee group. Um, the employee group was basically all the employees we that were in the uh, that work in the building, the uh, public works, the, the two public works director, uh, we did director, deputy director, we did um, the building department, we did the planning department, and one member of the central health district that works with the county equipment. So we surveyed all of them and then we followed up with interviews with the department heads. And that's how we got the feedback that you're going to see uh, moving forward. And I believe at this point, I'm going to pass it on to Thomas, who is Thank going you. to go through the data. Also, angle myself so I can talk to you. Do you want to move the podium so that you can? Oh, yeah. Try. I want to be more comfortable for it. Do you want me to move over here? Where are you going to be comfortable? You know what? I'll stand right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Tom Howard. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the um, results that we received from both um, both of the surveys from the applicant group and uh, the employee group as well. You can go ahead and change the slide. First of all, just starting off with basic demographics, we looked at how long um, individuals were employed uh, with the town of East Windsor. As you can see, um, you know, the majority, you have a lot of uh, 15 years or more more um, waging towards the total of 10 to 14 years um, with, you know, sort of a, a significant portion, 40% being new employees. And that'll come a little bit into play later with some of the short answer questions that we asked. Um, but you can go ahead and flip to the next slide. Another important um, question we wanted to um, evaluate was, you know, resources versus staffing. So we, we sort of based off of the preliminary information, wanted to know what sort of issues did they think there were issues in terms of the number of employees that were there, um, as well as the resources that, that they had. Um, as you can see, a lot of people um, think they have adequate resources, but also a lot of the employees thought there could be more employees um, covering the ground. Um, next slide, please. So lastly, we want to talk about communication, which is, um, you know, both in the majority, a lot of people think that the employees communicate effectively. Um, only a small portion are unsure, um, a, little, a few disagree, but that is an overwhelming majority um, who think people are communicating well. Uh, next slide, slide please. So um, just to synthesize some of the internal results when we get into the more of the applicant group. Unfortunately, we weren't able to share you know, specific answers uh, from the uh, employee group uh, due to confidentiality. Um, in order to summarize what people were bringing up, which was really, really interesting, we had a lot of great feedback and a lot of um, creative and thoughtful answers. Um, you know, People expressed that the time process could be better in terms of streamlining permits. Um, some people thought you know, they could have a system where they could prioritize permits, where you know, something like, like Jason was saying, something like a shed, um, you know, that could take only a little bit of time versus, you know, a new department store downtown, um, pr prioritize those smaller uh, independent projects. Um, another theme too was, um, you know, going into custom, uh, you know, customer outreach and employee outreach with these uh, applicants of the permits. You know, a lot of people were saying that um, they felt like, they were communicating well with each other, but they weren't able to really um, portray that message to everyone's questions that they had in the permitting process. They thought it was slowing it down a little bit. They also thought that um, 
there could be a better system electronically for the permitting process. Some people liked the electronic process, but others complained that it was uh, slow, that it was clunky at times, um, and it was a little bit uh, irritating when you know they were trying to understand and help people using this uh, current platform. So uh, please feel free to go to the next slide. And on to the uh, applicant group, the consumer group. So um, we, this was super interesting to sort of talk about how thoughtful the employees were and really, you know, um, they were really open to self uh, upon themselves uh, to make sure that they were understanding and you know, giving us great feedback. With the consumer group, it was almost universally accepted that it was a positive experience. Um, we have everyone um, here um, that it, uh, saying that it was a positive experience elsewhere from a different town that they have experience from a different town. Uh, next slide, please. And then they have uh, the consumer experience, right? Which, um, you know, you can see the, the blue co color is excellent and the red color is good. Um, so no one was satisfactory. Everyone was in the majority that this was a good experience overall um, and that they would, um, you know, later on, we'll get into a graph that talks about the recommendation, but also too, that it was streamlined too. That was a concern that the employees thought could be better, but everyone thought it was completed in a timely manner. Uh, next slide, please. So um, this is a little bit interesting too, about how the employees were bringing up, you know, how um, there could be a little bit more outreach with the, um, with the people who were, you know, performing the, the permit with em employee, uh, employees at um, the, you know, uh, East Windsor Town Hall in order to make the process better, you know, less questions. If you don't have questions, the permitting process is faster. But if you do have questions, if you turn around in a timely manner, that speeds the whole thing up and people are satisfied. So it's very interesting to know that um, a lot of people thought it was easy to understand. You know, all of that is in the five, five, four being higher, um, being excellent and good. And then on a scale of, of uh, one to five, you know, talking about uh, being able to answer your questions. Um, only a, a few people saw, thought it was a, a neutral response. Everyone else thought it was good. Uh, next slide, please. And, you know, just uh, wrapping up the whole uh, reception of customer service, again, uh, talking about was really great um, in terms of uh, communication with only a few people having a negative response. Uh, keep going. And lastly, so this is um, what we about Matthew uh, mentioned the competition between other towns that East Windsor is essentially competing to bring in this business. If the permitting process is efficient, then you can keep that business, right? A lot of people said that they would um, that they would recommend East Windsor as a place to you know to build, to live, develop, um, and only a few people had a neutral spot. So still overwhelmingly in the good. And next slide, please. And just to wrap up the short answers, um, we didn't actually have a lot of short answers. Um, a lot of people opted to keep those boxes uh, empty, which is interesting because we got the most interesting results from the employees from the short answers, right? So um, this was uh, you know, a positive and a negative thing. A negative being we didn't have as much to critique in this section from the applicants. But the positive is you know, consumers think you're doing a great job and you're keeping it up. Um, and you know, they don't, they said, um, and the, the responses that we did get, right, they said, you know, keep doing what you're doing. It worked out great. Um, I would only change this one thing, um, you know, and looking forward to you know, continuing to work. Um, and I'm going to pass it off to my uh, fellow team member, Michael. Thank you. Okay. On to recommendations. Uh, one of the biggest recommendations that we came up with was adding an exit survey when completing the permit process. This way, um, you'll be able to garner feedback from residents and uh, business developers as soon as they finish the process. Um, one of the things we were worried about with our results was that some of the people contacted haven't actually been moving through the permit process for several months now because it was already completed. This would allow you to generate more feedback and if needed, make uh, corrections or recommendations in the moment. Um, a large thing that came up um, was adding some sort of PR position for outreach and support. 
Um, they're tasking this with someone who already has other duties within the town hall or creating another position. Essentially though, um, <clears throat> one of the things that came up in our interviews was that a lot of time is spent answering the phones and tracking down where exactly someone is in the permit process, which takes away from the time that could be used to move people through the process. So if you were to add someone with a point position where they would be able to look up like, the status and give that information, it would allow your employees to work more quickly. Additionally, this person could um, do outreach, which means that they're going into the community in the fall and in the spring when people are more likely to build or need to get a permit in order to store something. Um, by being proactive about the process, you can ensure that not only are people moving through it quickly, but they're not experiencing unexpected delays with not knowing that they needed a particular permit or another. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that came up in our interviews was a suggestion for a universal permitting software and that it might be incumbent upon the town to reach out to state legislators to um, push for a statewide universal system. And that if everyone is using the same system and everyone moves through the system at the same speed, um, then East Windsor can develop uh, protocols or um, incentives to bring business in if the only question is like how like why one town over another if the process is universal um, with your great location being so close to the highway and uh, the airport and whatnot, there's a lot of incentive for businesses to come here. So if the system was universal across the entire state, there's, it would be more likely that businesses would wanna come here. Finally, um, we thought that data sharing and collaboration with other municipalities would be important if, all of, if you reached out to the surrounding towns and all of you were using the same software um, or using similar software, that way, again, it goes off of the universal software for the state, but if all of you are working together, then you can develop businesses or like a business development um, working group across different towns. Um, additionally, um, one of the things that came up in the interviews was that your leadership and teams are already working collaboratively with um, other towns and whatnot in order to hone best practices and gather data about how to move the process along more effectively and efficiently for applicants. And then we move on to questions. I, I'll start off and then I'll open it to members of the board. If there's members of the audience who would like to ask questions, if you guys are open to it, I'd be happy with that. Um, so the recommendations that you, you talked about, um, it's, it's your recommendations are eerily on point with something that hasn't been published yet. Um, the, the Capital Regional Council of Governments is our regional planning agency. It represents 38 towns in, in North Central Connecticut. And two of your points are going to be their legislative initiatives this year, uh, which is awfully impressive uh, that you guys would hone in on that. Uh, it, it, you, I, I think that's a pretty good indication that you hit that hit the nail on the head. Uh, they're going to be talking about in, universal permitting software and data collaboration between towns as part of the ARPA review and stuff. I just want to say that I did, that you did a good job identifying something that's actionable. Um, the same thing with the exit surveys. Uh, we when we had talked to the uh, research portion of that, that seemed something like, until we had had the conversation, I can't believe I hadn't thought of it. And then as soon as, as soon as that had come up, it's like, well, that's, of course we should do that. But, you know, but it, it didn't come about until you guys showed, uh, had shown a light on it. I, I thank you for that. Um, Selectman, questions, comments? I have a question for the first gentleman that spoke. Um, we need to go over the second gentleman that spoke. Yeah. Um, when we go over the consumer responses, mm -hmm. you, got, you said you had 15 out of 470 responses. Correct. Um, any idea why 
why all this didn't respond? Right. Um, this is why we recommended the exit survey. Um, just depending on, you know, um, I was looking at synthesizing the data, but Matthew was primarily the one um, sending out the responses, right? We had about around 75 bounce backs if, uh, of that pool, right? So if you're thinking about bounce back emails, you're thinking about, um, you know, we tried to, uh, we tried to send out emails for anyone who had uh, submitted through the permitting process, you know, that loss of communication. Um, some people are going to be checked out, you know, it's around the holidays. Um, when we started sending it out, it was the week after Thanksgiving. That was a, that was an element to it. And that was why we recommended the exit survey because people are still tuned in. Um, you know, a lot of people are not looking, this is only one element of their process, you know, um, they're not living in the, the building and permitting zoning world. Um, and by the time they, that they've moved on, they've probably already completely forgotten about this. Like, well, it's not really relevant to our experience anymore. Um, so we want to make sure that the consumers are really dialed in with that exit survey. We get the, the best feedback that we can. Yeah, I, I, had, I had sent out, <clears throat> Jay had helped us in this. I had sent out the emails initially in blocks that came to us from Permitlink. And then I would email Jay those emails and he would follow up with a letter explaining who he was and why we were doing it. And I think uh, we did, Thomas did a great job sending it through. So it wasn't, it just wasn't a link on an email. It was like a Google form, mm -hmm. but you know, you, I think people see that in a regular email, and they just blow by it. They're, they're not like, you know, all the scams and the, the things that come on in uh, spamming emails and stuff like that. That's why Jay's, uh, Jason's um, email uh, helped with that. But I, I will say this, that I myself have clicked through some of the surveys that I get, and I would just go right by them. But now that I know there's some poor graduate student on the other side, <laughs> I, 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 I just want to say that, actually, please, I will, I promise myself that I will answer this now because you're developing the bigger things. So I will do that if you guys can do that. <laughs> will I take the survey now? <laughs> <laughs> and when the exit survey goes live, try to build a shed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then one more question we have. Um, the public relations person. Yes. Um, what office are you looking for that, or it doesn't matter what office? Uh, it, it, what, it didn't really matter as to what office it went in, and the thought process was more either if you were able to add that those duties to an additional to someone's current tasks, or if you were in development of a public relations position or something. This would be one of the portfolios that they would work on, as opposed to tasking someone in particular. We also thought that, you know, with that um, redistribution of depending on, you know, if it's a new person or just uh, depending on how you're evaluating uh, employee duties and job descriptions, um, if you had one person, it sort of solves some of the other issues that the employees were bringing up, like the software being too clunky, you know, um, depending on, you know, what the future holds with the state and, you know, hopefully getting that that statewide um, software, but um, depending on, you know, it might just be a pick your poison between, you know, this is the permitting process that the, that the, the voters want, um, it's in the budget, um, but, you know, unfortunately, it's a little clunky. If you have one person, um, you know, really understanding that that software, as well as fielding all these questions, you know, that that uh, increases the efficiency time, make sure that, you know, um, if, if, if if a uh, town of East Windsor employee gets a question, but they don't know how to answer it, instead of, you know, that question being unanswered, they're referred to the pretty much the aficionado of the permitting process and appropriately software. Thank you. Um, and kudos to you guys for coming in and doing that. Very much appreciated. Of course. Thank, Thank you for having us. It's a Thank you. beautiful reception, beautiful building. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to echo everybody else's comments and thank you. I know it was probably a lot of hard work and, and it's it's enlightening. And I was also thinking of the exit survey because feedback from like all our customers basically is, is something that we're always starving for. Um, and so when we're making decisions like, do we upgrade the IT infrastructure? Do we you know go with this particular budgeting software package? You know, it's nice to have that kind of information. So I think that exit survey would be great. Do we do we consider funding another position? No. No. I'm saying no. <laughs> well, I mean that could be that could be something that that real time data from from people who are using the service um, provide. And PR position is also something I was thinking about a bunch of things. Um, unlike Ellen, I have a different opinion. Sometimes more is better. You know, just leave it at that. 
Sarah, are you still with us? Yes, I'm still here. Um, I'd just like to echo everybody else's comments um, and just thank you very much for your work and thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Are there members of the audience who have any questions or feedback for the students? Really? <laughs> okay, there we, there we go. You, you, sir, and then you, sir. <laughs> Name and address, please. Jim Richards, 27 Pleasant Street. Um, it's kind of funny what you talked about an economic development commission the other night. We were already discussing some of this stuff. And hopefully, your presentation will get those no votes out of the budget process. Um, but when you get out, everything you've said is what we've heard from the business community up to this point. Um, and the, the pitfall that you hit on, exactly what the businesses are saying. So yeah, the job well done. I'm just enjoying the whole thing. It's, it's what we've heard, and now we've got proof of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's encouraging that you say that because it shows that we were on target. We were way off. So. We learned something in class. <laughs> yes, we did learn something in class. We were on target. Uh, the professor had to work hard with us, but uh, we, we got there. And uh, this will actually, uh, we're developing a paper that we'll submit and then ultimately share with the select board. So there'll be a written document. It's a little bit more robust than the presentation. So, I, I look forward to reading that. Yes, sir. Um, that will meeting point three Rice Grove. I think it's a great idea to have one person to take all the phone calls. Then the person at least knows the resident or who's ever going for the permit. They have a body, someone to put with them. They're not calling randomly saying, I'm looking for information. At least if one person can always be that person, like that lead person. Wait. Yes, sir. Uh, I wish I'd been included in the survey because a couple of years ago I applied for a swimming pool permit <laughs> <laughs> during the pandemic and uh, had some issues with the process. And I, I think Jason mentioned earlier that uh, if you're putting up a shed or a swimming pool or something simple like that, that there should be a way to expedite that a simple application with all the bells and all the uh, boxes checked should be able to be uh, moved through the process quickly. So I hope that's going to be addressed. Um, I, so I, I appreciate what you went through. I think I might have skewed the answers a little bit, if, uh, especially if it was a couple of years ago when I was waiting for that permit and it was turning to mid August and I still hadn't put my pool. I might have had different, uh, <laughs> better and positive ones on yeah, that. That's why our recommendation is to get it back from ground zero or close to ground zero because we might get those frustrations. That's, that's what I was saying. <laughs> that immediate feedback would be very helpful. And maybe it would, it's better to wait a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't want uh, to steal her presentation, but, but Ruth and I have had a couple of conversations about software that is available in other towns that does provide that status and, and update as to where you are and where you need to be. So the other comment, the comment I would make on the permitting process is that at the time I was applying for my swimming pool permit, when I called the office, the response that I got was generally not very positive. The response that I got was that under state law, we have, I forget what it was, 30, 30 days to respond to the permit application. And then I pressed a little bit, and then I got the response that, well, because of COVID, we actually have an extra 90 days if we want to take it to respond to the applicant. Um, it was uh, it was a frustrating process for me. Um, I appreciate your response and hopefully that'll, that'll uh, although I'm sure there's already been improvements in that process, I'm sure the result of your work will result in even greater improvements. 
So thank you for your work. Of course. course. I just got one question for you. Yeah. Did you ever get your Yes. Oh. <laughs> this is September 15th. My, uh, <laughs> my grandson was living with us during COVID from New York City. And uh, the purpose of the pool was primarily for him. We got the pool put in a week later, he went back to the city. I just want to make a comment that it looks like a lot of our recommendations are being implemented, you know, with uh, Jason's example of looking up South, uh, you know, South, South Windsor, yeah. um, South Windsor's software permitting uh, process, or not permitting process, but um, their budgetary process. Um, so it looks like a lot of the things that we're recommending, and this wasn't scripted, you know. I didn't know what you were going to say. Yeah, exactly. It just seems like it's, it's lining up, and, um, you know, thank you for your feedback, and it's, you know, we greatly appreciate it, and was very beneficial to us. May I say one more thing? Sure. It's really important to work when you study this kind of issue because this is what uh, gives people in the community a sense that uh, their town government cares for them and cares for their needs. So, really nice work. Thank you. It, it was a great opportunity to work with graduate level students yeah. to address a need for the community. I, I'm, I'm very appreciative of the opportunity and the good work that you guys did. I also, you know, just to, to give them a plug, I would say it was particularly helpful having Officer Devlin and Lieutenant Carl uh, as part of this because they had some some personal familiarity with the processes, the personalities, the issues that we might face. That I really think added a lot of value. Other questions or comments for the group? Thank you, folks, very much. I really look forward to reading them. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Thank you. We should have, thank you. You guys are certainly welcome to stick around. Um, we have a couple more things uh, to do. Otherwise, wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Nice, that won't be nearly as interesting. Yeah, we only have a couple more things. Okay, so returning to the call of the agenda, I'd ask that we take up agenda item 9C, uh, which is tax refunds. Take a motion to go with business 9C, tax refunds. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Sarah, this is this is your item. <laughs> um. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Make a motion that we accept the total tax refunds of two thousand seven hundred twenty-one dollars and eighty-six cents. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, 9E, discussion of the Robert Fire Department request for purchase. So just as an update, um, they, uh, the Robert Fire Department is in the process of issuing uh, or requesting um, qual qualifications for purchase of a new fire truck. Uh, because they are a town department, that is going to need the awarding of the RFP is going to have to be signed off on um, by me. Um, and so I, I need authorization from you folks to do that. Now, the RFP closes on December 29th. Um, they're hoping to, to get that in place very quickly thereafter to secure a price. We don't know what the bid is going to be, what the winning bid is going to be, what the price is going to be. Our next meeting is January 6th. So one of the things that we can do is you guys can authorize me to accept a low bidder um, tonight, or we can actually review the RFP submissions on January 6th and hope that the, the bid holds. It should. But I, I was asked to bring it to the board and ask what you guys were comfortable doing. Whichever you want to do, I'll find out. That pretty much covers what we talked about yesterday. So if we wait till the next one, which would be my preference, we're not holding them up, are we? By a week. By a week. I mean, because they're like, I think it's 407 days out from the time they signed the contract. So we do want to be expeditious if we can. So it's, it's uh, it closes the Wednesday after... Christmas and our next meeting is the Thursday after that. 
So it's an eight by eight by. I would think it, I don't have a problem with all ten on the rights and music, but I can sign off on that as long as it's within the uh, referendum cluster that we don't see the amount of things about the study for the referendum. So that would be totally not surprised. No. No, there's there's no book. So there's no book. So um, with this, actually, that's a good question. Did they need to do a referendum for a fire truck? It's over a million dollars. They might need. Mm -hmm. You know what? Why don't I check that? Um, you're thinking about the 200,000 capital that was included in their budget that was adopted in referendum. Yeah. Um, okay. That's just the way they're going to finance it. But the overall purchase, now that we talk about it, the overall purchase is, is likely to be north of a million bucks. So that might have to go to a referendum. Jason, I couldn't hear what Marie said. Would you mind repeating it? I'm sorry. Yeah, so she asked if, um, she said that she would be okay with me uh, signing off on the, the winning RFP as long as it didn't exceed what was budgeted for at referendum. And I corrected that there hadn't been a referendum held on that, but it did make me start thinking, isn't there supposed to be? Um, because anything that's over a million dollars needs to go to a referendum. I didn't think of that. No, I don't think anybody did. And I think you're right. So that seems to answer that question. Um, well, could we make a motion for you to go ahead and sign it provided that all legal aspects have been covered? Well, they won't be able to encumber the money until they can't sign a contract right. anyway. Until okay. Okay. Exactly. Okay. That's a pickle. So we'd have to do it quick. Yeah, very quick. Yeah, because you don't want the price to go up and you know it's going to go up everything is going up every month. Plus their days out goes up. Yeah. And the um the way they're gonna finance it's you don't want to let it go forever. So the rates are good now. Let me ask the town attorney um how to handle the the potential cost considerations. Maybe it, I'm not sure if it would be different because it's a lease purchase versus not a bond, but it is an appropriation. So I need to I need to check the charter. Okay, uh, that satisfies that I guess. Um, if need be, if there if there is an opportunity for us to expedite it, I'll, I'll call a special meeting to do it. Okay, selection reports. <laughs> Um, over the last few weeks, I've shared with you, uh, I've shared with the community requests from our community services department for hams, turkeys, gift cards, and toys. Um, our community has very generously answered that call. Um, because of the support from the community, we will be able to provide 209 families with holiday food baskets and 169 children with toys to open at Christmas this year. Um, that was information that I included in my call last night. Um, I didn't share in the call last night, I, I, without naming name, I will share that um, we had a gentleman um, write a thousand dollar check for turkeys at Thanksgiving. Um, and when I put out the ask uh, last week, he wrote another thousand dollar check uh, to benefit the, the work of community services. And out of respect for him, I'm not going to disclose who it is, but I did send him a, a personal note of thanks for his generosity. That was remarkable. Um, Robert Elementary School uh, held a food drive to benefit East Windsor Community Services. Um, the product of their work was handed out today as part of the food basket distribution. They collected more than 2,000 items for uh, families in this community just at the elementary school, which I thought was worth including um, tonight. Um, we talked about the DOT grant and the senior bus. Um, we talked about that my request tonight to do uh, clear cup. I'm very excited to move forward for it. That I think is going to really provide people a better insight into how things work and where, where we've been and where we're going. Um, on December 7th, I was happy to join Lincoln Tech as they announced their newest partnership, which is with uh, Penske Truck Leasing. Penske is sponsoring a new brand, a, a newly branded and dedicated space <coughs> where diesel techn technicians will be able to launch their careers. Um, Representatives from Lincoln Tech's corporate headquarters and campus leadership were on hand. So too were representatives from Penske, State Rep Representative Carol Hall and myself. Um, Lincoln Tech helps prepare students for career-oriented or career local jobs that won't be outsourced. You're not gonna be able to digitize somebody fixing, fixing your car or welding, your, welding a building or anything. Those are local jobs that'll stay here. 
On December 8th, I was invited to present on East Windsor's Erase Grant Program to the South Central Regional Council of Governments, which is a body that represents 15 towns in the greater New Haven area. So that program continues to be a model that um, sought after around the state. On December 9th, I had the honor of being named to the as the Legislative Committee Chair and as the Secretary for our regional planning agency, which is the Capital Regional Council of Governments. Um, CROG represents 38 towns in Hartford and Town counties, um, and they are a means of advocating for regional cooperation, transportation initiatives, regionalized public safety response, improved efficiencies in local government, fostering economic development initiatives, and more. It's a great honor to be able to represent the town of East Windsor and advocate for policies that will benefit our entire community on that platform. On Friday and Saturday evenings, I had the pleasure of joining the Warehouse Point Fire Department and the Broadbrook Fire Department, respectively, to commemorate their annual awards dinners. Both departments have a great deal to be proud over the, over the last year, and I appreciated their invitation. Um, thanks to Problem Solved Brewing Company, who hosted an ugly sweater party to benefit East Windsor Social Services on December 11th. Um, I showed up thinking it was a favorite sweater party, so it was not uh, you know, really in, in vogue with the theme. Um, <laughs> Wait, that picture I saw you was your favorite sweater? It was my favorite sweater. <laughs> uh, East Windsor has many dedicated uh, community-minded local businesses, and we appreciate Problem Solved for helping support the good work done in our community services department. Yesterday, I joined State Representative Foster and others to discuss issues pertaining to well water con contamination, root causes of that, and potential legislative strategies and solutions to address that issue. East Windsor has been plagued by well water issues like, like many towns in the area for a long, long time. Um, the panel discussion lasted more than two hours and more than 45 people joined in real time with several hundred more having viewed it afterwards. Thank you to Representative Foster for her leadership on this important issue. There are two great community events that are taking place on Saturday. At noon at the Windsor Hill United Methodist Church, we're gonna be doing our Reads Across America commemorative event. Um, and then at 5.30, um, we will be doing, in partnership with Robert Fire, we'll be doing the Torchlight Parade from the East Windsor Middle School to the Fire Department. On December 27th, the East Windsor Lions Club will be hosting a blood drive from 1 to 6 p.m. at the Town Hall Annex. And on New Year's Day, the American Heritage River Commission will be hosting their annual New Year's Day hike, which begins at uh, the end of Melrose Road at 1 o'clock. This is one of the best heritage hikes in the state of Connecticut and typically draws between two and, three, two and 300 people. Uh, lastly, the town is hiring. Um, if you'd like to join our team, plus, please check out our website. Current employment opportunities include an assistant town planner, zoning and wetlands compliance officer, a part-time planning clerk, part-time recording secretary, a part-time senior center nutrition site manager, and a part-time social services uh, clerical assistant. That's all I have. Marie. On December 8, 2021, the Commission met at 21st in the Emergency Management Conference Room. Election of officers took place. Bob Leach, the chairman, and Darren Long as the secretary. Monthly financial statements were discussed and approved. Wolf at landing traffic issues from 2017 resurfaced and was determined that no to the no right turn on red was in the best interest of the Route 5 traffic flow. Discussion took place regarding the 2022 budget request. Resident Daniel Harden addressed the commission in regards to the concern he has and will be providing written documentation for future review. With Christmas season break quickly upon us, the East Windsor Police Department participated in the annual Sucker Cruiser and the Shackle Top Program. These two programs are sure to bring some joy to those in need. Can't thank them enough for putting community first. I wish everyone a great holiday season. Thank you, Madam. Oh. Thank you, Madam Chair. Three meetings to uh, tell you about. I took the Board of Ed meeting this month for. Uh, Sarah, because she had a other engagement she couldn't uh, miss. So I'll go over that first. Uh, they reviewed their strategic plan, which uh, I thought was uh, was a pretty quick uh, review. And I think uh, I won't characterize it, but if you want to look at it, it's up on their site. Uh, the high school principal uh, gave the high school update. Uh, they were, as everybody probably knows, accredited in June of 21. Um, and they worked on five, five priority areas, which uh, they did fairly well. They are now working on uh, some uh, career pathways to, in addition to uh, the college pathway, they are looking at three pathway clusters. One would be architecture slash construction. Uh, another would be transportation, distribution, and logistics. And a third would be hospitality and tourism. And if these sound kind of uh, familiar, that's they were basically, they went and looked at uh, 
jobs in our local area, in our town, which uh, you know might be available to people. And, and so for people that are not going into the military or to college, these would be three other clusters potentially that they could uh, they can follow uh, to you know to go the direction that they want to go. Um, on the reentry front, they have implemented screen and stay. Uh, I guess this that past week, uh, this was December eighth. Uh, they had uh, I guess like twenty positives. They have two hundred or at the time had two hundred kids in the screen and stay um, process. Um, fall indoor guided sports, which is what has been happening. Uh, of course, um, kids must be masked. Uh, after 12-23 is the winter uh, in, uh, indoor sports guidance, and um, the school can decide at that point in time. So each school will be deciding for themselves. Um, what they found is uh, team vac vaccination rates have fluctuated. Uh, what they're planning and what is really uh, happening right now is uh, spectators are three feet apart in masks, home team attendance only. And uh, one note that they had brought up is that the Department of Health vaccination rates for what they've recorded for kids in our school are higher than, than what the school is aware of. People are not really reporting at the school level, but of course, the PH has that information. And the other thing that they did talk about was the Connecticut Teacher Residency Program, which is an alternate route to uh, elementary uh, certification for teachers, uh, and there it is specifically been created to attract certified and retained teachers of color. Uh, and it's basically a, a grow your own program for uh, getting teachers into the elementary school. Uh, so that's something that they're, they voted to approve and they will be pursuing in the future. They currently have 1,031 students. And the only other note I have is that the 45 day period for the uh, commissioner replacement began on 1124. So for the open position for the commissioner, uh, somebody will have to be appointed for two. Uh, I attended the Broadbrook Fire Department uh, commissioner's meeting. They had 73 calls in November. Um, at their annual banquet, which I had to miss for work, they uh, awarded Derek Chapin for Firefighter of the Year, Elizabeth Hunt for Junior Firefighter of the Year, Rich Paradise for Member of the Year, and Jim Bancroft uh, was awarded uh, appreciation for 30 years of service, which is pretty impressive. Uh, also, uh, the chair with, and the chair of Broadbrook Fire Department uh, commissioners and, and the chair of the Warehouse Point Fire Commissioners are talking still about uh, things that they can share to pay. So they're looking to um, work together on five or six different items and things that they can that they can uh, share cost on. So that's pretty good. Um, the current budget that the chief reported on is all in line with what they expected, except fuel costs is running high for them because fuel is just way more expensive than anybody thought it was last year. Um, uh, and the new truck, uh, right now, uh, if they were to sign up, would be 480 days to the time it's delivered. So time is of the essence there. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and previously, when they were talking about it, and I think I reported, I know I've reported on this before, things are just out of control. Aluminum's up 40%. Um, it's, you know, the sooner you get it done, the better. Um, the proposed budget that they, they did uh, present their first uh, draft of their proposed budget, they still have a workshop January 10th, but currently they're at, and they don't expect any changes really, but they're at a 0% increase. Um, for this next year, that they'll be presented. So no increase. Uh, yeah, the last thing that I went to was planning and zoning this week. And uh, as was mentioned earlier, they did accept an application for the South Road up, uh, the South Road ownership uh, program process we're going through. And uh, so that'll be going through the next couple of meetings, we're going through their process. So that was good to hear. Probably the only other thing of note uh, is that they have a, a public hearing open for the discussion of the draft zoning regulations for cannabis establishments in, in town. Um, so uh, they did talk quite a bit about uh, things to change on, the, on, on what's been proposed, and they left that public hearing open till the January meeting. Uh, 
So if any of the public wanted to get in on that, there's plenty of time left to, to have some input on that. But basically at this point in time, the town due to its size can have one retail establishment and one micro, what they call a micro grow operation, basically uh, under 10,000 feet. And so we have had interest uh, by various entrepreneurs. And, and, and so they decided to work this through and be ready to have this in place uh, when the program gets up and running. So more on that. That's all I have. Sarah. Okay, hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, due to uh, work commitments, I was unable to attend two meetings. So I'd like to thank Selectman Nordell for covering economic development and a big thank you to Selectman Baker for covering Board of Education for me. On December 8th, the Board of Assessment Appeals held a rather short meeting conducting annual business. The board nominated Austin Holden as chairman and approved their application forms for hearings to be held for potential appeals on both the motor vehicle grand list and grand list of October 1, 2020. And they set their meeting dates for 2022. Um, on December 9th, I attended the Veterans Commission meeting. I'd like to congratulate the commission on their most successful Veterans Day 5K road race to date, profiting over $17,000. Commission members discussed the successes of the day and things to improve on for future races. And we'll be working on a thorough checklist so things will run smoother and nothing is forgotten for upcoming events. The group began to discuss ideas for future projects and ways to help veterans in our community. East Windsor will be receiving 35 wreaths for this Saturday's wreaths across America, which will be held at the Windsorville Cemetery at noon. The commission selected the following officers, James Barton, chairman, Rick Webster, vice chairman, Gil Hayes, secretary, and Peter Sanders as treasurer. On December 10th, I was honored to attend the Warehouse Point Fire Department's annual Christmas awards dinner, which celebrated two years worth of awards since it couldn't be held last year. Congratulations to the award recipients and thank you for all that you do for our community. On December 14th, the Arts and Culture Commission met and they had a very productive meeting. The commission has prepared selfie boards for upcoming events to pose for photos. Weather permitting, um, there will be one at the Torchlight Parade on Saturday, and they also plan on having one at the New Year's Day hike. The commission collaborated on projects they'd like to complete in the next fiscal year, and they decided on a number for their budget request, which is right around the corner. Submissions are still being accepted for their logo contest. The deadline is January 31st of next year. Um, please submit your design, name, and phone number prior to the deadline to ewartsandculture at gmail.com. Um, and lastly, however you choose to celebrate, I'd like to wish you all a very safe, healthy, and happy holiday. Merry Christmas, and I look forward to seeing you all in the new year. That's all I have. Thanks, sir. Public participation. Uh, there's a public second opportunity to address members of the board of selectmen. Is there anything anyone would like to say? Okay. Um, I don't have a need for an executive session this evening, so a motion to adjourn would be in order. The move. Made and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Wait, we are adjourned at 834. It's already out. Yeah. What meeting?